New book, T.D. Jakes, yeah. Don't drop the mic, the power of your words can change the world. I found this book under communication and social skills. I really love the way that he communicates and this is actually what he's teaching in this book. I already know T.D. Jakes from motivational videos and sermons that I saw on YouTube. He's a bishop, I'm not a Christian, Still, I'm interested to read the book. First impression, almost one hour in. I really enjoyed this book so far. It's not just for Christians, even though he's a bishop and a preacher. He makes it very easy to understand, very easy to follow. And I actually couldn't really stop listening. <laughs> I went to the shower and I just kept it on and I was actually listening and I was putting the water. <laughs> Like I couldn't listen, so I rewind. I didn't actually want to miss anything. Well, so far, I really enjoyed the book. A lot of value, a lot of practical tips about co communicating. I actually started creating notes for me. Well, he talks about fear of public speaking and he actually gives you very specific advice, things that you can actually do before you go on stage whether it's taking a few breaths, he's talking about having notes in the lecture and, and constructing the points, the things that you want to deliver. He calls that the process of digging for bones. Digging, <laughs> excavation, before exclamation. It's like it's a game when, when you have enough bones, then you try to put them all together and to craft your message. He, he actually walks you through the process of creating a lecture, creating whatever you are, not just this is, even though he's a bishop and a pastor and he does sermons, he's addressing it to everybody. I cannot not think about Jordan Peterson's book in comparison to this book, because also T.D. Jakes shares examples from the Bible and the New Testament. I think it's just a better storyteller. He's, he's a very good storyteller, so I'm with him. And, and when he shares a story, for example, he, he talks about David and, and Goliath's story. It's, first I know the story, so it's easier for me to, uh, to relate, but, but, he, but he shares the story with a lot of detail, so, so it's easier for me to relate and get the message throughout the story. He also made, make some uh, very powerful analogies. Oh, he says, meeting with the audience where they are and then talking to them to where you are trying to go. So he says, it's like Uber. Yeah, it's not just about the destination. It's also about where you are. Where, and, and when you talk to an audience, it's where they are and where you want them to go. And there's the gap. So he talks about this gap. And <laughs> that was funny. When he starts, he just started a biblical story or something about the New Testament. I was starting to lose him. And, and then he said, well, I know I might be a little bit preaching right now. And then he sort of stopped it. As far as I see right now, he's very aware about speaking to different audiences. Halfway through, really enjoying the book there's so many things i wrote in the notes i want to share with you he has a lot of quotes that he's sharing he mentioned at least four or five quotes that are my favorite quotes quotes that i actually remember by heart i actually collect i actually collected thousands of quotes uh, during my life and these are my best quotes he has so many powerful messages and examples, which makes it for me much more tangible. He gives you practical knowledge how to actually do it. Actually, how he did it. <laughs> and at times, there was one point, he was sharing his own stories, some of it, a lot of successes that he uh, had. And, and just about when I was started thinking, he's a bit of uh, like, he's bragging and, he said it. Well, I, I'm, 
I don't try to brag, I just want to share with you the, the importance of preparation. So for me, it was like, it's reading my mind. <laughs> and he give you practical tips. Let's say you, you, have a, you have a public speaking, you have a speech that you need to do in an in, uh, in, in event, wherever it is, go there. And if it's important to you, go there one night before, sit as the audience, imagine yourself on the stage, then you can go on the stage, imagine yourself giving the speech. Well, even, even when he shares some uh, stories of, uh, from the Bible about Christ, I, I'm there, I'm listening. I'm not sure how he does it, but it makes it interesting. So I actually listen. It's very easy to understand. It's easy to understand his analogies. They are quick. They are also the language is easy to understand. It's not, he doesn't use big words that, that I need to <laughs> look at the dictionary. Sometimes as I was doing with Jordan Peterson, sometimes he just, I was just carried away by story. I had no idea what's the connect. I actually forgot what's the, you know, I'm reading this. It was entertaining. And then he actually delivers the message and it actually supports a previous message that he shared. He speaks a lot about silence and, and he actually gives you four ways how to use silence. There's some things that he goes back to all the time. One of it is, uh, is uh, practice, practice hard work, experience, doing. Right now, the last three chapters, it's a different section. It's actually a different writer. I don't know him. Dr. Frank Thomas. I like the cha chapter titles. The recipe, the ingredients, the taste. I finished the book. Well, <laughs> sort of. In the last three chapters, uh, Dr. Frank Thomas uh, uses the analogy of the cooking. It was nice, but for me, it sort of ended. He talks about T.D. Jakes, so he's he shares T.D. Jake's story, how he was brought up and what, I don't know, for me it was, I read this book to get the communication skills of T.D. Jake's. When he transitioned to these th last three chapters, it was something else. And then the last part, Dr. Uh, Frank Thomas does a full analysis of one of T.D. Jake's sermons, which I didn't see. That's why I'm not gonna listen to the last part. So this is the summer. A lot of knowledge, a lot of power. With almost zero fluff, it was enjoyable, it was entertaining, it was flowing, it was, even the things about the Bible and religion and stuff. So I was sort of ready to hear stories, maybe I'm not that interested, about, I don't know, Christianity but it made it relevant. I actually listened. It was very interesting. So I actually enjoyed 95% of his stories that he shared with the biblical or from his own life. Sometime, one time I was, I think I shared that with you already. I was so drawn to the story. I forgot what, what the rule was, what was the idea. But at the end, he actually connected to it, it made sense. For me, the book was also very well organized. He was also very honest. He shared everything, the successes, the, the failures, everything. Super honest, super open. I, I really liked the, the structure. Structure was very good, in my opinion. First part, motivation, small dose of motivation, relevant for the specific chapter, the specific idea. Then he presented the, the idea very simple, in a very simple way. And then he went straight through, very smoothly, by the way, to breaking it down with loads of examples, sometimes rules and guidelines and advice. He made it accessible to anyone. He always came back to the audience. He always made sure that whatever he's saying to the audience is actually relevant. This is his main message. He always come back straight from different angles in the book. So this is it. No 
matter how much you like it, make sure those receiving your message will find it valuable, practical, and personally relevant. I could talk about what theologians think of Nimrod all day, but how did that transfer to takeaway benefits for those I was there to minister to and serve? I could tell stories of many indelible, vivid moments from my latest visit to Africa. But other than perhaps entertaining my listeners, what would they take away to help them in their lives, to help their faith grow? You will have your own brand to fulfill. But as you assemble any message, it's good to keep in mind two foundational pillars. Who cares and so what? I think he calls it the, the so what factor. Can it help people? Does it make a difference? Who cares? Knowledge versus power, a lot of knowledge. And with all the knowledge, making it super practical with a lot of keys to power. A lot of knowledge, a lot of power. Highly recommended, especially to people that want to be speakers and communicators, but also for everyone, because every one of us are communicators. That's it. See you in the next review.